Mr. Secretary, good to see you again. Um, in 2020, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported that Ohio had the fifth largest overdose death rate in the country. In the same year, Ohio, fentanyl was involved in 81% of all of the overdose deaths, often with a combination of drugs. The Last year, drug enforcement agencies seized enough fentanyl to kill every American, capturing more than 50 million fentanyl laced pills and over 10,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. I've been to the border. I've seen how the cartels are able to smug drugs into the communities. And we need HHS to protect Americans from the fentanyl flooding our border. We need to hold Mexico accountable and continue to warn Americans about the potential for fentanyl laced drugs. In the President's budget, there's roughly 40 million to combat fentanyl trafficking and disrupt international criminal organizations. What steps, Mr. Secretary, is your agency taking to prevent fentanyl from entering the United States and killing more Americans, including constituents of mine back in Ohio? Your answer, sir. Congressman, and, and I want to be respectful here in the answer because you're asking me what I at HHS can do, and mo much of what you're asking is about the border, and that's not within the purview of the Department of Health and Human Services. I can tell you, if you wish, I know you have limited time, what we're doing with regard to fentanyl, but it won't be so much at the border. That's really Department of Homeland Security and other agencies. Okay. So is HAS working to combat the large amounts of fentanyl waste drugs currently circulating in the U.S.? Absolutely. We are dedicating uh, some $11 billion in our budget uh, for drug overdose uh, prevention and to try to address this as best we can working with the states. Um, just one, one thing I found that was interesting in the President's budget, uh, climate is mentioned 74 times more than the word fentanyl. So um, just an interesting, interesting point. Real quick, I do want to just touch upon something that um, is uh, that we've seen particularly during the COVID time with our EMS personnel and um, with the treatment in place uh, that we've actually seen. And it's been really saving people a lot of money because, as you're well aware, our EMS personnel in the past and, and currently most of our EMS personnel are actually only paid if they take somebody to a hospital. Um, but under this waiver program with this treatment in place, we're finding that these folks are able to actually save money by being able to di diagnose it on site. So um, it's a good program. It's something that I, that I know that works with your agency. I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that. You know, have 45 seconds. It, it, and I'll be brief. It, it, it moves us more towards prevention and rather than waiting till you send someone to the ER room and see if you can catch them before they die, it's trying to make, make use of the evidence that shows that certain preventative approaches can actually save lives early. 